Hello, Brian, and welcome back to Japan by River Cruise. I'm Bobby Judo, and unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, we'll see, Ollie Horn couldn't be here this week.、Uh, but joining me is Magdalena Osumi. She's a journalist for the Japan Times who also holds an extremely coveted record among foreigners living in Japan. She holds the record for most powerful person that you told to cut the Gaijin Atsukai bullshit. Hers was the Ministry of Foreign Affairs.、Uh, fun fact mine was a college student working at the register at Starbucks. Anyway, Magdalena, thanks for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. On this week's show, Magdalena is going to update us about the border crossing situation here in Japan and explain how the new Japanese vaccine passport is supposed to work.、Uh, just to be clear, that's Japan's vaccine passport, not to be confused with the USA's vaccine pass, which is just a handwritten note that says you don't have to get the vaccine and you get it signed by Jesus. Plus, your River Cruise News, we'll be talking to the geniuses behind the limited run Tokyo Bay Pirate Cruise about how they sold thousands of seats on their ships by catering to people who wanted to cheer for their favorite Olympic athletes without financially supporting the games in any way. What happens is the cruise entertains passengers by sailing just out of Japan's legal jurisdiction and showing a pirated feed of the Olympic coverage. But first, soap talk. Uh, Brian, Ollie's not here this week, so I'm really counting on you to step up your game. Yeah, why not? Hey, Bobby, how was your week? Okay, Brian, that's enough.、Uh, Magdalena, you wrote an article recently about the Belarusian sprinter who、uh, received asylum status in Poland.、Um, can you run us through what happened with her?、Uh, yes, she was.、Um, uh, basically, she complained、um, on Instagram about her. Uh, Coach's negligence and her,、uh, it, it was addressed at、um, her coaches. But、uh, as you know,、um, critics of、uh, the regime in、uh, Belarus uh, are um, treated um, definitely differently from foreigners in,、uh, in Japan. So、uh, mm. it's, um, it's not,、um, I think that people in Japan、um, may have. Problems with、um, im- well, may struggle、uh, to imagine how、um, this kind of、um, posts of、uh, on Instagram can impact their their life and careers. And、uh, as she was、uh, representing the, the country,、um, mm-hmm. they um, her uh, criticism, which wasn't really.、Um, uh, Which had nothing to do with the,、um, the regime or.、Uh, yeah, it, it wasn't criticism of the government or the, the political situation. It was just that her coaches had put her in something that she wasn't trained for, right? Yes, she was、uh, supposed to、um, run in, as a sprinter. She's,、uh, she was taking. Um, part in uh, two um, events, but she was、um, added to a team of、um, 400 meter、uh, relay.、Uh, And、uh, she had never, hadn't never h a d trained、uh, for it. And she, it, the reason why she was added was because、um, other、uh, team members couldn't come because they were、um, they didn't have enough tests for doping. Uh, done、uh, before coming here. So、uh, it was,、um, I'm not、uh, that familiar with,、uh, with that situation back,、uh, like in、uh, what's happening in,、uh, in the team. But I、yeah. know that、um, her criticism of,、um, well, targeted at her coaches was treated as, a,、um, as treason, as、uh, that's how the, the state、uh, TV. Uh, portrayed that, and that's how、uh, she's、um, she's been treated as a traitor of the、uh, of the nation. So it looked like there was a lot of sympathy for her、uh, in the Japanese Twitter sphere and on Japanese media. And I saw a lot of people comparing it to what happened with the Ugandan athlete who disappeared、um, and then was like found in Mieken, who'd run away to live and work in Japan. Yes, but I think that like these two cases are, are completely different. I know that、um, I feel very sorry for the、uh, for the athlete from Uganda. And、uh, mm. I heard that he's back training.、Uh, he was.、Um, 
um, when he returned, he was questioned, uh, of course, but he was really sent now his training. Uh, so he will, I, I believe that he can continue his sports, uh, his career as, a, as an athlete uh, back home. But um, mm. he, the reason why he came here must have been uh, completely different from uh, Tsimanovskaya's. And she was really trying to do her best to perform well and to represent her country at the Olympics. Mm. And uh, because the Ugandan guy, well, ran away before the Olympics right? started, before his events started. And she uh, ran in one event and was preparing for, right. preparing for another one. Well, I think I'd heard that he hadn't qualified. He'd come over with his team, but then he hadn't actually qualified to compete in the Olympics and was due to be sent home. But I don't know. I, I, I think there's definitely something that you know, Japan and white people and Western people are definitely more friendly to a white face than a black face. I think that's a big factor in it. But I also think there's a big factor here where the reason that Japan was int introduced to his story was that he broke quarantine and did something that everybody was kind of on edge about. Definitely. And that's yeah. one of the main uh, concerns um raised by people who are uh, against the Olympics. And, yeah. uh, and I think that like when we see the numbers of um, athletes and people linked to the Olympics uh, popping up every day, and uh, today we we saw 29 cases, as, if I'm not mistaken. So it's With like uh, the Greek artistic uh, swimming team and, yes. and the cluster that broke out there, yeah. So, um, so it's really, um, so we can't blame anyone for, uh, for criticism against, um, the, uh, these measures the government has taken, uh, the measures, yeah. uh, tar quarantine measures are getting, uh, people linked, uh, to the Olympics and, uh, and they are, um, looser than, uh, those imposed on people and on travelers and people who live here who are trying to return to Japan. Well, I want to talk about that. I, I do think there's definitely an aspect of, of racism in the different reactions to the Ugandan athlete and the Belarusian sprinter. But I also, I don't believe for a second that Japan would have really given her asylum. I thought she was granted asylum status in Poland and everyone's saying, oh, Japan was ready to give it to her. Japan was ready to give it to her. I kind of feel like that's like when I tell my wife that I'll do the dishes when I know that she's already done them. Mm. If Ollie were here, he would have laughed at that. I, I'm not, <laughs> I wasn't really sure what you mean. I think Japan only said they would do it because they knew they wouldn't have to do it because they knew somebody else would. I don't think if Japan was the only option for her, they would have necessarily really actually granted her asylum status. But I I, don't, I think that it, it was in, mis, misinterpreted because I in, like many people say, said that she was uh, seeking asylum here. I think that she was only asking for protection, and that's that was the yeah, case. Yeah. That, yeah, I didn't get the idea that she actually wanted asylum here. Yeah, but some some reports um, like suggested that she may want to stay in Japan, but I don't really think she mm -hmm. uh, that was um, yeah that was probably only um, just a confu confusing uh, yeah. way it was exp uh, used in, in reports. And yeah, in terms of culture, um, I can see how it would be harder to cross over into Japan. It's also still very, very hard to cross over into Japan's borders. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do this like Ali does. Uh, Ali always throws to the news this way. He says, let's take a look at the news. Magdalena, the last time you joined us, we were talking about people stranded abroad and not able to come home to Japan or, or you know, non-Japanese residents living here and having trouble trying to go back to their home countries and then wanting to return to Japan. A lot of problems with border closures, uh, not taking foreigners into account. Um, I'm really glad that that's all been taken care of. Oh, not really. Everything has been taken <laughs> care of. And uh, that's the thing. Like uh, Some rules um, show that, well... Not everybody is equal here still. Uh, yeah, people are still having trouble 
making their way home, right? Uh, it's um, definitely easier to return to Japan. It's now uh, this one uh, has been solved, and I think that uh, this this was um, the major issue we discussed last year, last time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now uh, people who live in Japan can uh, return uh, without major issues as long as they're not visiting some countries that uh, where the Delta variant is um, rampant. And mm. uh, so it's uh, so basically Japan says that every um, resident, uh, legal resident can return Uh Unless you're not coming from India, uh, Sri Lanka, uh, Afghanistan, and several other countries uh, near, uh, neighboring India, um, and it's never been about um, it's never been about um, nationalities, according to the government. But once again, uh, only Japanese citizens can travel freely from any country, including India, and those uh, where foreigners are banned. Um, so once again, Ontario. it doesn't apply to people, Japanese people who hold Japanese passports, even if they are in Delta variant heavy areas? Yes. So it's uh, so when once uh, we thought that, they, uh, that Japan learned uh, its lesson and uh, made the, the measures more equal, and mm. but this year, uh, it started um, getting back to uh, what happened last year and started uh, imposing travel bans on on people traveling from certain um, areas, regardless of whether they have uh, been here, uh, if, even if they have permanent residency here. Why? 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 Do, like, do we think it's? Do you, we think they forgot? Do you think they didn't remember us again this time? Do you think they don't care? I don't think they they have ever uh, given any thought. <laughs> I think it's like um, I have, and I've been following this uh, these issues from the very beginning, and I realize mm-hmm. that they have never had any plan. It's just a reaction to uh, to the changes in uh, the pandemic situations around uh, the world, and they look at the numbers. There, there are people who are um, assigned to uh, check uh, the num- infection numbers, and they uh, look. At the rules, uh, they check what uh, what's allowed and what's forbidden under the uh, current laws, and they there is no one who is uh, overseeing it, and they, the decisions mm. are made uh, at at the higher level. Like I um, like even if I talk uh, to uh, my favorite minister Motegi or um, <laughs> or someone else from the. Uh, immigration services agency, although they they mostly uh, take care of people returning uh, to Japan, uh, they won't have any answer because uh, the um, the decisions are made at the cabinet um, uh, office and they are signed by Prime Minister Suga, and uh, so of course the, they are based on some discussions and suggestions from those people who are in charge of you know those minor uh, bureaucratic stuff. But uh, well, yeah, that, that's, go ahead. That's the thing that I I worry about because I could understand if there was turnover or if there were different people in charge of the different regulations because Japanese organizations are notoriously bad at sharing information, kind of in between regime changes, but. <sighs> If it's being made at like the ministerial level or the higher up level, then those guys should remember that they had this same problem last year. That they should remember that it was called out as discriminatory and mm-hmm. not having any basis in any sort of science. It was just blatantly discriminatory. Well, of course it was, and um, and I won't hide it that I I, I agree with with you uh, here. But I I think that they. Um, 
there there has been um, a major change in the way how people returning to Japan have been treated. And, and I'm not sure if you've heard that some Japanese people who had uh, incorrect um, incorrectly uh, filled out documents required upon entry, uh, they were sent back or they were denied, maybe not sent back, but they were denied um, uh, they couldn't board the flights uh, to Japan because mm. uh, they were so yeah basically they were denied well, it's entry good that it's, it's good that they're applying the same rules to Japanese people too it's just that I, I what I want is not for Japanese people to also be stuck <laughs> I want the foreigners <laughs> to be able to come back in too <laughs> Well, but I think that it makes sense if they are if these measures, like quarantine measures, are applied uh, equally. Right. But right. as we see, they're not because of people from certain countries, uh, even those with permanent residency, can't uh, return. They can, of course, they can, but they would need to spend. Yeah. Um, they would need to spend fourteen days in a another country which is not banned <laughs> but it's uh, like for people who are traveling to see yeah. families it's, well, it's it's a serious issue for people just let me say this it's a serious problem for people who are uh, for instance visiting their families uh, family members who are sick who are dying and they um, yeah. they it's not a um, they're not going to India for travel or for work even. They just go to, they, they just need to go there. And and sometimes, and people who have families, they, they still can't bring them. Right. Well, you recently wrote a full rundown of how the vaccine passport system is expected to work. Um, do you think there's any chance that a vaccine passport might help people in their situation? Or even me. I mean, I'd, I'd like to see my mom sometime soon. I know that uh, the, the list of countries and regions where people are <clears throat> exempted from some uh, quarantine measures uh, around the world, uh, is uh, the list is gr uh, growing longer. It's getting mm. uh, longer. But um, so I could, if I wanted to go, I could because Poland uh, is on the list. But uh, the problem is that Japan doesn't uh, recognize its own uh, vaccine passport that it, it, it issues. Um, Japan issues uh, a document it doesn't uh, approve of, which is Wait, weird. What? <laughs> what? What? Okay, so let's start at the beginning. So a vaccine passport... <clears throat> as Japan is introducing them, is supposed to allow people who've been vaccinated in Japan to travel internationally and come back. Is that right? It's supposed to um, help people travel abroad, but it won't help you get back to Japan because you will still need to uh, undergo um, a 14-day quarantine and um or and depending on the region uh, you're coming from, you may need to stay in um, government-picked facilities, like m mostly hotels. Uh, so uh, yeah, it, so it doesn't your, work at your in own Japan. Expense or at government expense? Uh, that stay in uh, government-picked facilities is covered by the by the government, which is good, and you get okay. free meals. And but people are stuck in very small rooms. They can't leave the room. And um, I mm -hmm. I've heard um, from many people that um, they have concerns about allergies and um, like Japan doesn't really understand um, problems with uh, gluten. And people right. uh, allergic to to gluten, and uh, so if someone uh, asks for um, food uh, for people with allergies, uh, they may still get something they're allergic to, and uh, they have uh, the the problem is uh, for people who uh, people who have kids. It's not really. It's hard to say that uh, this system is really working perfectly and it's well organized. There are still many issues uh, at the border, so maybe it's better than uh, that. Japan uh, accepts only well around two thousand people uh, a day than a, mm. an influx of 
people who um, coming back or uh, yeah. new entries who are still waiting for their um, chance to come. Right. So, so what is a vaccine passport ostensibly good for? Um, it depends on the country, and uh, as we know, there are many countries. Many countries have imposed uh, different uh, rules, and it's uh, definitely different from the one that um, Europe, the European Union has, which allows you to travel freely. You just have you just show a QR code, and it's you don't need to self quarantine uh, and in some countries like um Poland for instance uh, i know that people who travel there will be exempted from uh from the quarantine but uh, as the the list um is getting longer the those um uh, requirements so currently, are different where are you allowed to go with the japanese vaccine passport uh you can it's uh, i would need to check the list but um it's around 10 uh, it's more about a dozen regions there are four for instance four uh, islands in thailand but it's um but this doesn't necessarily exempt you from uh quarantine uh, in one uh, country i uh if you check my stories, you will know. Uh, I will. Uh, I, I, it's, I've explained it um, in my recent story uh, quite um, uh, with um, details. Um, mm -hmm. But um, if you, uh, there are countries that uh, only allow in people who have been vaccinated. So uh, in those regions, um, the passport uh, issued in Japan will allow you to enter the country. That's one thing. Okay. Uh, in some areas, you, wo you won't need to show a negative te um, test result uh, for COVID. Uh, and it's more convenient because, you know, sometimes... Um, I, I think that many people have problems with getting tested uh, before travel, their trip, even here, because uh, tests are quite pricey. Right. Uh, I saw in your guideline that um, you need, obviously, a passport to get your vaccine passport. Does that mean a Japanese passport or as no. a non-Japanese resident? You can, anyone can apply. And okay. uh, so it's for, um, it applies to all residents of Japan, including foreign mm. nationals. So it's not, there. Are, there's no discrimination there. But uh, yeah, the problem is that Japan doesn't recognize its own uh, passport. So it's a. I think that this um, the the reason why the there are many. Well, you, I mean, <clears throat> you keep saying that it doesn't recognize its own passport, but I think if I understand right, you're saying if you go somewhere and then come back with the vaccine passport, you have to quarantine. Doesn't that kind of make sense? I mean, well, it does. If you go somewhere, you could pick up. The, the virus and then even if you're vaccinated you can still spread it can't you yeah well i uh, agree but i think that uh, it, this is the the problem uh, why some countries are not uh, on the list yet because they are i've heard that uh, singapore and israel are demanding mm -hmm. reciprocity and that's why uh, some countries are not um, they want um the same uh, for uh, their citizens um so uh, right now japan asks other countries to accept their own um documents uh, but they don't want to let other countries they don't yeah. want to acknowledge other countries vaccine passports. yes that's that's one of the main issues but like you said it, well it's true that um it's um the fact that you, when you travel, you can pick, um, you can get, uh, you can contract the virus, and uh, self quarantining makes sense. But many countries uh, have uh, introduced um, new rules for people who are vac vaccinated that exempt them from. Uh, so, one, if they have the passport, if they if they have been uh, inoculated, in, if they can show proof of that 
they mm -hmm. can travel outside and get back home uh, without uh, self-isolation. Mm. Do you think that there's any pressure on Japan with the way the Olympics are going and the tensions around the Olympics and the numbers going up? Do you think that they feel a pressure to be extra strict with their normal border entry regulations? I think, yeah, I'd like to hear uh, that um, the entry restrictions have nothing to do with the Olympics, but I'm afraid that we may see a change uh, after the Olympics. Definitely, it, um, it, it's obvious that if the government wanted to hold the Olympics uh, safely, <laughs> mm. uh, they the government didn't want to uh, the numbers to grow and border control measures are one of the main um, um, ways uh, uh, different governments are dealing with the pandemic and the, this is the way to slow down the spread of the virus and uh, I think that Japan may be um, may have taken this measure too seriously because it's uh, Japan is maybe one of very few countries that have maintained those entry bans uh, on uh, targeting new visa applicants for so long right. for like over a yeah. year. there are people who, who have, been, have been waiting for over a year and I've spoken to uh, several uh, experts and um, they say they, that that it's not the way to stop the virus. It's just a, a way to slow it down, slow, slow the spread down. And uh, so right. the, so quarantine measures are needed, of course. It's obvious. Uh, we, mm. we need some um, border measures uh, too, but uh, it needs to be done with... Um, it requires some planning, some... Uh, idea how to handle it in the future this you know um this is something that japan doesn't have at the at the moment i think japan doesn't have a plan how to handle it after the olympics are over yeah and also they don't have a plan on how to handle it internally and any good <laughs> messaging about ha how to handle it internally there's so much focus on the external threat and not granting new visas and locking down the borders and and you kind of forget the idea that the call is coming from inside the house. <laughs> well, <laughs> apparently, it's it, now it's undeniable. We see that, yeah. uh, like the it's they they they're um, they've gotten rid of uh, the threat from outside. Well, except from some, you know, except people, for the Olympics, <laughs> people linked to the Olympics, right? <laughs> Hey, thank you very much for listening to this episode 94 of Japan by a River Cruise. If you enjoy the show, you can donate to the show or buy merchandise at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Japan by River Cruise. And if you give us a whole bunch of money, maybe Ollie will come back next week. Uh, just kidding. He'll be joining us from the Edinburgh Fringe. Uh, we've already got him locked in. Thank you to our guest this week, Magdalena. Magdalena, we always enjoy seeing new articles from you on the Japan Times. Thank you for inviting me and for um, explaining for for a chance to explain uh, your listeners um, about these uh, tricky entry restrictions and border control measures and vaccine passports. And I will be uh, I'm uh, still monitoring the situation and I will keep writing about it. So if anyone's interested, uh, please follow me on Twitter and uh, or. Visit my uh, visit the Japan Times to see my uh, byline articles. Thank you very much. Thanks to everybody for listening, and we will see you next week.